Hello, this is John Bona with the Story of Liberty. The God-ordained family, a husband, a wife, and children, has always been the main unit of people on the planet Earth that God has blessed. He's blessed them with private property, ownership, and the absolute right to educate their children. But unfortunately, the concept of the family unit has been mostly lost. This is because the family is being redefined by the secular people and robbed of its God-given right to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. God-ordained family is to have control over the earth. We see God granted the family institution authority over their own children and family property. No other institution is given this type of authority. Only the God-ordained family is vested with this authority from Almighty God. It is by the family that nations and borders were originally determined. And then governments eventually came. Families existed as a governmental unit prior to the formation of countries. Here's a story to inspire and challenge your family. Notice how the power of only a few individuals from one family tree helped to build two great nations. John Knox, a former bodyguard and one of the great reformers, returned to his native Scotland in 1560. He had spent 15 years in prison and exile. He preached the liberating truths of the gospel with such power from the pulpit of St. Giles Cathedral that much of his nation was converted. So much that the Queen, Queen Mary of the Scots, feared the prayers of John Knox more than all the armies of Europe. As a result, Knox's faithfulness, the lives, the culture, and the government of Scotland was transformed in only one decade. Four generations later, a descendant of John Knox married a minister named John Witherspoon. And by this time in 1740, Scotland was once again entering a time of economic turmoil, famine, and persecution from its powerful neighbor to the south, England. But the Witherspoon Knox family endured trials and even imprisonment, and they worked to revive the true faith in their homeland they preserved. Elizabeth and John had 10 children, but only five survived. Prior to the founding of our great nation, John left Scotland and accepted the invitation to become president of the College of New Jersey. You know it as Princeton University. In the 1760s, the colonies were being pressed toward war with England. They were determined to create the world's first constitutional republic. Rather than fall back into the old European model of the divine right of a king, a tyrant. And the people would have no rights. They would be impoverished. If the colonies were to succeed, they would need political, military, and spiritual leaders that would surpass any in history. They were all aware of the nation Israel that was under the people's law. So they were organized in small family manageable units where the parents of a family had a voice and a powerful vote. From the beginning, like Israel, the entire idea of strong local government and that the land was looked upon as private family stewardship of the people not the government, the rights of property, the rights of life, 
and private liberty were protected because the main thrust of the government was from the family unit upward. In America, the liberty of family property is legally rooted in the Declaration of Independence as a specific unalienable right, the pursuit of happiness. This great term, the pursuit of happiness, came from the right to legally own private property. They are linked together. We clearly see from the words of Scripture, subdue the earth, that this grants authority to the family to property. Property is a gift of God to the family as shown when Israel left the captivity of Egypt and God caused Pharaoh to give Israel much property and wealth. It was a gift from God Almighty. That's why imposing a tax on property, on family property for any reason is really wrong especially taxing for public education. City, county, state, school taxes are wrong. In fact, a property tax is nothing less than a claim of perpetual rent. Just see what happens if you don't pay your property tax. It'll be forfeited, if not paid. See, this reveals the only ultimate true property owner is the government that demands and collects the taxes. See, this goes against scripture and is anti-private property. Our Constitution guarantees private property as an unalienable right endowed by Almighty God and is listed as a reserved right to the people under the Ninth Amendment. That certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. That's why estate and death taxes are wrong too because it impairs the God-given right of parents to pass property onto their children, their posterity. Our Constitution states to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. That's our children and grandchildren do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America. See, the governing of America limited its powers because the law of enumerated powers ensures that, that the U.S. has jurisdiction only over certain enumerated objects and no other. The God-ordained family, in fact, is a primary unit for God to further his kingdom and man to conduct activities on planet Earth. So husbands and wives, have more children. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the Earth. Forget about using birth control. That's the first job description of the family, to bear and train their children. Men and women on their own do not have this privilege to raise children, neither does the government or the church. This specific blessing is given only to the God-ordained family. This is what our declaration calls unalienable rights. This God-given right to procure the family unit cannot be interfered with. The current homosexual movement, legalized abortion, Infanticide, or the idea that children belong to the government, is an abomination. These anti-God people push the legal right to adopt innocent children into the grasp of a gay couple. This infringes upon the God-ordained family's unalienable rights. It goes even further because the parent is to provide for and educate their children. This includes homeschooling children, and no law may abolish these parental God-given rights where parents decide where and by whom or in what manner their children are to be educated. The Bible tells us so. 
Fathers, bring up your children in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Ephesians 6, 4. See, education begins around the kitchen table and needs to remain under the family authority. You might remember a presidential candidate, who, by the way, did not win. He complained about the government funding public broadcasting and the National Endowment of the Arts. Well, as I said, this particular presidential candidate did not win the election, but he was certainly right complaining about the issue because the government subsidizing public education and is engaged in substantial educational services. This is unconstitutional. When parents were given the natural right as having authority to educate their children, suitable for life, not the state government. In early America in the 18th and 19th century, the government did finance public schools, but the principal approach of teaching of the Bible was an integral part of that teaching. It was not until the early 1950s that judges began to view education as secular and not religious. But those who founded our country, who drafted our founding documents, were concerned over what entity ultimately had control over the children. And their answer was the family had control, not the state or the church. That was their concern. Consider families in need, for example. Well, if you have a needy family in your neighborhood, get together with other families and help them then they won't need the government to get back on their feet. You know, a contribution of a loving neighbor brings liberty. While government assistance we have seen over and over brings bondage. So where does this all bring us? The truth is parents cannot be wishy-washy anymore about the path that God has made for education of the family's children his way in education. Either parents realize that the fear of the Lord is ostentatiously observed as the beginning of education, or God is not observed. Christ said clearly to parents in the Great Commission, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. There are compelling proofs that the original U.S. Congress knew that the Christian religion and education were inseparable, and that the government should encourage, yes, they should encourage, but not establish an educational system like we have. Well, again, the original purpose of the First Amendment has been distorted, and it interferes with the rights of the God-ordained family. Folks, it's difficult for most people to even imagine what I'm about to say. But the truth is, public education, public schools are unconstitutional establishments. The nature of the problem is exactly the same as if it's just magnified at the national level. As said, all politics are local. And if we can't dismantle tyranny, Locally, you can forget about it happening in Washington or at the national level. There's a lot of work to do. It's an uphill climb. And it'll take time, but remember, we're planning ahead for our children and our grandchildren's futures. It's time to get busy, get involved, and then we'll have a steady pace of reform in America. The family should pursue education for its children by homeschooling whenever possible, by utilizing private tutors and teachers who will take direction from the parent, and then eventually the unconstitutional public school system will be dismantled at the local level. And once more, the God-ordained family will claim ownership over the minds and hearts and souls that go on for eternity of their children. It begins with
parents caring about these problems. Get involved and take action.